Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's pray first. Yeah. Okay. So God, um, ask that you enter the room and use Savannah and I as a channel, which through you speak, may you remove any ego, pride, anxiety, fears, worldly clamors that are blocking us from what you need us to say. Amen. Amen. I love that. Let us be channels. I love that. All right. Welcome back to Unlocked. I'm so excited for this week because you guys get to meet one of my best friends, Holly. Hey. Welcome on. So we kind of talked about this yesterday and we were like, Mm. I don't really know if people know the extent of our friendship. Like everyone knows Chad because Chad's, I don't, Chad's just more out there, like on social media and stuff. He was like famous before he ever got famous. (laughs) Everybody knows Chad. Everyone knows Chad. I love that. He was famous before he ever got famous. That's amazing. But yeah, so you and I, we've, the way we've become friends is really interesting. Yeah. I think we've like trauma bonded, honestly, (laughs) through, (laughs) through this past year. I know we really have. And you know, to each their own. Some may say that's not healthy, but whatever. It's worked for us. Um, but the crazy part is, is we've known each other really for like four five. or five years. Yeah, I think five years. But it wasn't until the past probably year year mm-hmm. that we really? like got really close. Yeah, it's been it's because all of this like you know I'm currently going through a divorce um that has like rocked my world it was I was completely blindsided by what happened um and what brought it about so uh of course I always like lean into Chad who was always mm-hmm. like my safe place and with Chad I got you so <laughs> it was a true blessing because I think and we've said this before like we we came into each other's lives like just at the right time because when I met you originally or or the first time we like really hung out was when we all went skydiving (laughs) that was (laughs) y'all I just we just have to say when we went skydiving that was probably the most fun Mm -hmm. experience ever and Chad was not having it yeah Chad wasn't having it and I made Chad jump first (laughs) I like litter. I remember that he was like shaking. Yeah, I was like, as you should be. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. that was really the first time we actually like hung out, hung out. But I don't even think you really spoke to me much that day. I'm gonna be honest. I don't think I've ever told you this, but I was super jealous of you. And (laughs) it was mainly I would I would do the most like catty things with Chad. Chad would like post on his Instagram and be like, me and my bestie. And I'm like, who is this chick? Like, who is this? I would get so upset. And I'm like, Chad, like, what about me? Um, And I think that goes to say, like, and show that you can't judge a book by its cover. Mm Because, you know, people have done that to me my whole life. And they've definitely done it to you. And I did it to you. uh, Because I thought, what do I have in common with this girl? You know, like, you on the outside seem so perfect. Like, your life is so perfect. Um, And that's just that's just not the case. So, um, especially over the past year, I've gotten to know, know that about you and love that about you. See, and that's the thing. It's like, when you say that, that's like the whole world. It's Mm -hmm. even since I've started this podcast, you know, there's been an overwhelming amount of support and love. And like, you couldn't ask for people to be nicer, Mm -hmm. but there are those people that post the negative things and why do I want to listen to this girl talk about her problems? Try having real problems. Right. And it's like, I just put it together really well. Like, mm-hmm. dad and I are the same people. I think Aaron calls it, what do you call it? Call it, uh, what do you call that it? That dad and I are very good at compartmentalizing. Yes. Very no, but compartmentalizing. Yeah. Dad and I, what we talked about with Lindsay. Yeah, like it's dad and I are really mm-hmm. good and you're the same way. I like am. we're really good at compartmentalizing and our whole world could be falling apart mm-hmm. literally. But on the outside, you're never going to know it. Yeah. And I think that's which in a way I've kind of I've done it to myself cuz it kind of does myself a disservice because I'm hiding everything. So I'm making everyone look like it's perfect. Right. And then they're just 
it's hard for them to see that there's ever any hurt or any real stuff that happens mm -hmm. behind all of it. And the body doesn't forget that. No. The pain, the emotions, the feelings that we experience, we can get dressed up and look cute and go out and hustle and work and take care of our families and do all those things. But the feelings are still there and they yeah. do surface eventually. Well, there's a book and it's called the body keeps the score. the score. Yeah. Yeah. And I learned about that in therapy and was told to read it. And it's so true. It's like, mm -hmm. you may feel like mentally you're okay, but there's this whole, I forgot what it was called, but I had learned about it. And it's like this whole point system of mm -hmm. like all kinds of different trauma. If this has happened to you, you're at higher risk of fibromyalgia, all these other things that affect your body. And it's like, it doesn't go away. Like your body always keeps the score. Doesn't matter what it is. And that's the hard part. But also too, I think this past year, I don't think I've ever even told you this. Like you and I have gotten really, really close. And there are times like, I mean, I think I really knew like, all right, she's a badass friend. When I came home from the whole trial. Oh yeah, that was horrible. And you and Chad were standing in my house mm -hmm. and you literally just like, you immediately came up to me and like hugged me and embraced me. And cause I didn't, I didn't cry the whole way home. And then you literally, it was just like when you did that, like I just fell apart. You, you quite literally fell on the ground. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, and, but like you didn't think twice about. No, of course not. Just giving the love that you have and literally uh, basically undressing me to, to get me to shower and calm me down. And that just goes to show that like the real people, when life gets tough, mm -hmm. like your real friends and the people that matter, they show up they and show the ones up. that don't. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. I think to seeing you like that, because again, I hadn't really, I ever even tried to see the, how much we related. Yeah. Um, but once I could see it, I realized that you are also such a badass. And um, there's like a balance with that, you know, but, but it's just like, we're talking about how we uh, bottle up our emotions and we keep trudging and like, we keep pushing through. And when I saw you break down like that, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like yeah. I, have to carry her through like others have, have done for me and like you've done for me this yeah. past year. Um, but I've, I don't think I'd ever seen you cry. And I think that's probably, I may have seen you cry like twice in the past year, maybe <laughs> three times, but I, I, I can only think of two times and then you, you suck it up and you, you keep yeah. pushing. And so, I mean, I, I couldn't, I don't think people realize what a hard worker you are, yeah. how motivated you are. You, you don't stop working, whether it's the podcast, your sassy, uh, sassy by Savannah, like all your products, um, the TV filming. I mean, it's constant. Yeah. And I'm and so too, proud of you. I think like you've been one of like my biggest supporters throughout the whole thing. And y'all yesterday was a tough day. Um, just, you know, I'm just going to say it. it was a really tough day. And at the end of the day, I had some like good news on some real mm -hmm. estate stuff. And Holly sent me a picture, which we'll see maybe if you can see it, but it was like literally of me sitting on my computer and she said, she sends me a text and she was like, as the world crashes around you, I just want you to remember this. If you're ever feeling weak or broken, you've got a fire in your soul. You'll be okay. No matter what. And then the next text was, I'm going to tan real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but, BRB. I'm going know. to tan. But no, it's just like stuff like that. More people need that. Mm -hmm. And like, I hope more people find friends like you and Chad and like Aaron, just all the really good people that send texts. And, you know, like Pamela last week sent me a really nice text. It was just like out of the blue, just, you know, just having good people around you, mm -hmm. you net like 
you just never know what someone's going through. You never know what that one text could do, what it could save, what it could, like, just, it restores a little bit of hope when you feel like you've got none. Um, so thank you for that. And I love you. I love you too. I think it's really good too, to not feel alone. Like you don't have to do life alone. It is hard to find those people. I think Chad and I personality wise are a good balance because Chad is more like optimistic and uplifting. Mm -hmm. And I've like, and Chad's been through the ringer. You've been through the ringer. Um, but I think with my experiences, I've get into, into a more deeper level of it. Also, my mom's a LCSW, a therapist. So I'm like, <laughs> just automatically go there, you know, <laughs> just automatically go there. Yeah. So, I mean, we've talked about me plenty. We've talked about me enough. I mean, I love me, but you know, I want to talk about you and okay. I want to talk about whatever you're comfortable in sharing with your story and who you are for people to just know you better in your heart. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm so proud of you. Like, you. I'm so blessed to know you and, Thank you. Like, it's honestly a privilege to be a part of your life and Nash's life. And oh my gosh, Nash loves you. So Nash, much. okay, y'all. Nash is her little boy and he is the cutest little thing ever. I can't. He is, he is amazing. He's five years old. Um, he is thriving. And I'm hesitant to talk about like that part of my story, but of course I will because I, I like we did right before we started filming is we both prayed and my prayer is always that I can be used as a channel, uh, for whatever you believe in God, higher power, the universe. I choose to call my higher power God. Um, but I just want to be useful. And I know that the pain and all the experiences I've stopped questioning why me, I automatically know Now I don't, I don't question why me. I just know that I'm going through this experience to be useful to somebody else. Yeah. And because I think we're all like a collective consciousness. We are all here. We're all going through stuff. Like you're not the first Mm -mm. woman to be going through a divorce with a kid. Uh, And like, there's going to be plenty more that come after you. Yeah. So it's, if you can help, because when I tell y'all like, Holly is the best mother, like the Thank best you. mother. Like it's amazing to watch you and your patience. And like Nash is one of the most well-behaved kids I've ever met. Like, I'm not going to lie. You know, I love kids, but one of my pet peeves is when they're like wild. Yeah. Wild. They're like, they're, they just don't mind, Yeah, you know? And it's like, they're running around your house, tearing it up. Yeah. Like, I'm just a little too OCD for that. She really is, y'all. <laughs> y'all should have seen the like, Nash the knows song. now though about the white couch. Like, <laughs> don't put and Savannah always is just smiling at him because she loves him so much. But like yeah. she's re- like internally like dying about her white couch. <laughs> so I'm like, Nash, like please don't put your feet on Sassy's couch, please. Please. Um, but he gets it now. He's yeah. learned. He, so. he gets it now. Yeah. He's, he's really well behaved. He's great. And too, he's the smartest little kid I've ever met. He's very, very smart. Like when it comes to math, Ooh. y'all. Like Holly and I were adding up something yesterday and we both we're like, were like a little off. And yeah. Wishing <laughs> Nash was with us. Yeah. I was like, I should have just called Nash. And again, y'all, he's five. So yeah, he literally, what was it? He was like, you Nash, said five, five minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Nash has a surprise for you in five minutes. Mm-hmm. And he goes, actually. 300 seconds? Yeah. 300 seconds. Yeah. And I was like, He said it me? like quick too. Yeah. He didn't think, he didn't think about it. Yeah. Um, but I think like, you know, first I want to say that um, I appreciate like you letting me come on here. I mean, you asked me, I, I didn't ask to come on here, <laughs> but I probably wouldn't have ever you would been have open. never. I would have never been open to it. No. Um, but unfortunately, like in going through a divorce, which I, I don't wish upon anyone, I, I, I've been defamed. And you can relate to that, right? Yeah. People say all kinds of stuff about you and your family, things that aren't true. I think this felt like an opportunity to like, you know, I've been quiet for so long, especially in the the marriage that I've been in and which I didn't mind because I, I don't really want to air my business anyways. Yeah. But since it's out there, <laughs> um, you know, so I think that before we talk about Nash, like yeah. I do want to bring up that um, I'm in recovery. 
Uh, I've been in and out of recovery and just struggled with yeah. addiction since I was young, probably 13 or 14. And it's, you know, I've got really bad anxiety. My brain, I, th I think primarily it's like just a lot of ADHD. Um, but anything that could make me feel at ease, that's what I liked. So definitely wasn't into like upper, you know, I feel like, I feel like my brain's already like, Bleh. um, but you know, and I, too, with I do want to say before coming on this podcast, you were really nervous mm -hmm. to tell your story mm -hmm. and I get that. And I don't want you to share anything you're not comfortable in sharing, but also I want you to know how awesome it is that you're at where you're at mm -hmm. and how it's something that you should be so proud of that no one can ever take away from you. And anyone that tries to discredit it, it's right. like they can kindly, you know, yeah. kick rocks you know. and sketchers. Mm -hmm. Like I <laughs> like go yeah. on and because I, I've been around it. Like right. I've seen addiction. I've seen what it does and how hard it is to truly kick it right like so and the fact that you're at where you're at it's huge right i appreciate that there's a um there's such a stigma around it there too. is such a stigma and i think that's why i mean i'm happy to talk to to anybody especially if they're struggling i'm not going to go into too much specifics yeah. because i feel like if i were to go into specifics it kind of it makes me uh, unique versus people being able to find the relatability yeah. to my story because it doesn't matter if you've got an eating disorder, a gambling problem, you're a drug addict, you're an alcoholic. They're all forms of escape, and that is what my my root issue was was running from me and feeling. I don't like to feel. Um, I mean, I like to feel happy. I like to feel good, but the anxiety that, you know, I think I was just born with, I don't know. Um, and fear and sadness, uh, anger, all those things like I could just do without. Yeah. And I think because I was exposed at a young age, a formative age where you learn to have behavioral, uh, regulation and, and things like that. I found this other solution, and that's what I continued to go for. Um, unfortunately, that's not manageable for me. I, it never will be. I, I will always have addiction issues, and you know, by the grace of God, I'll, I'll you know remain sober. Yeah. Uh, which I, I I've my sobriety date is three fifteen sixteen, so it's almost been. Well, I guess it's six years. I was going to say it's almost been seven years, but we're like. <laughs> nowhere near March. Um, hey, that is awesome. Yeah. But there, but I mean, I think that was, that was it. It's like just running from pain, emotions. I wanted to read. Can I like yeah. look at my phone? I wanted to read <laughs> this I one. look at my phone? <laughs> I'm already doing it. So uh, there's this one quote from, is it, it Glennon Doyle? It says, to be alive is to be in a perpetual state of revolution. Whether I like it or not, Pain is the fuel of revolution. Everything I need to become, the woman I'm meant to be next, is inside my feelings of now. So basically, like, pain is the touchstone of all spiritual growth. Yeah. Um, if I'm intoxicated through it, through the pain, whether it's grief or fear or et cetera, like, whatever you're going through, I'm not growing because I'm not feeling it. I'm not alive. Um, I think that's why me and you have gotten so close over this past year because you've been going through all the things you've been going through yeah. with everything that's happened with your family and it's it's horrible and I've watched it I've been there with you through it as you've done the same for me. I've gone to court I think 5 times in the past yeah. year with my ex um and it is it is horrible. Uh, and what's so, I will say for me, what's so horrible to watch is we all have a past. Mm -hmm. We've all done things that we're not proud of, that we wish we could change, that we, like, we've all got it. But unfortunately, your past has been used against you mm -hmm. when that's not who you are. Yeah, and it has nothing to do with the breakdown of my marriage. That's yeah. for sure. 
Uh, <laughs> well, that's the thing is you were a great wife. Like yeah. you No, were, I had my, I had, I did have yeah. my, my issues like everybody else does. So I don't want to claim perfection. Yeah. Um, but I remember asking, I don't, I'll probably say husband during this. Cause I mean, I legally he still is, but, yeah. um, my ex, I remember asking him like, I was so confused and I was so alone at the beginning because I wasn't really sure what was going on. I had found some texts on his watch from a coworker that he was, you know, at, what he's admitted to is an emotional affair. So we'll just keep yeah. it at that. Um, an emotional affair with this girl who I had suspected for a while, but then she befriended me. And so I kind of let it go. But nonetheless, like I remember asking him why, why are you bringing up my so uh, sobriety? You know, yeah. like, why are you bringing up my addiction? What does it have anything to do with anything? And he said to me, well, I had to have a reason. And I didn't even understand that at the mm. time, but you know, there's a couple, there's two ways you can go about a divorce and it's like uh, contested or not contested. Not con yeah. yeah. And so I, uh, what did you say to me like the other day? Like the only person who wins in all of this the, is the lawyers. Yes. The only person that wins mm -hmm. is the lawyers. And that's the sad part because and two, I think the hardest part for you, because like we said, we thought we were so different, but we really are oh so similar when it comes to the emotional aspect and just mm -hmm. we're so similar. And I think the hardest part for you has been, I trusted this person so much, so like much. And you lived a life of chaos, mm -hmm. you know, before this person. And then this person brought so much. So it was consistent. Yeah. It was very safe. Now there was like a lot of lack on his part. Um, but I would choose that, uh, safety of like knowing who the person is yeah. versus like a bunch of emotional, um, cause he's very, for the most part, unemotional, yeah. uh, not a lot of empathy towards me. Um, but he was safe and I thought I knew the morals and values of this person didn't waver and so I would choose that any day over some sort of like yeah. fiery romantic, you know. Yeah, because uh, everyone thinks it should be all fireworks. And mm -hmm. and granted, it can be that. It mm -hmm. can. But certain people just need certain things. Mm -hmm. And so I think what was so hard for you was knowing you had all that safety. And then in like the blink of an eye, it was like, whoa, like I got disposable. Yeah. Disposable. Got completely, completely screwed over. Up. And like, yeah. And the, and the worst part of all of this, cause I, I think it took, it took me two months. I, I spent most of last December and then January of this year grieving the person that I thought I knew, mm -hmm. uh, my ex. And now once I like <laughs> didn't snap out of it, but honestly just worked through it, that was definitely the most emotions I've ever experienced walk through sober ever yeah. and it was horrible yeah. but the great thing that I learned which I've needed to learn for a long time is that I can feel those things and I don't have to use any sort of substance to get through it you know in those times God is everything or he is nothing I can lean into something greater than me I can pray kind of like how you were saying yeah. about that you were amazed with your parents that they still continue to wake up and dedicate time to God and prayer in the morning, regardless of all the stuff that is happening to them. And that's, you know, yeah. is a choice. Cause when I'm sober, I have a choice. Then what I'm going to do, am I going to reach out to another woman and be vulnerable? Am I going to pray? What am I going to do? Or am I going to go use drugs or drink or, or do something that isn't, uh, useful, honestly. And it's not going to get me through it because like we said, those emotions are still there. Yeah. The pain is still there and I'm eventually going to have to walk through it. So and what would you say was, cause it took, I feel like it took you a while to like muster up the courage to be done. I think. And for so long, I think maybe you knew more than what 
I, you let on mm-hmm. that you knew. There was a lot of women in my life, uh, specifically like my friend Kelsey and Judy and you that would tell me and explain to me my emotions that I, I truly didn't understand what was going on. So I feel like, and, and this may not be, be accurate, but from what I understood, the feelings that I was feeling during the grief of this relationship were like a roller coaster. I mean, one minute I would be angry, but for the most part I would be sobbing. And I'm like, I need to work this out. I know he's been unfaithful. Um, but you also have a young a child. child. Right. And it was just it was just all these emotions. I but at the final straw was um, just a level of betrayal. I I knew at a certain level of betrayal because it was just one thing after the other, after the other, yeah. after the other, that eventually I was like, there's no way I can come back from this now. Uh, one of the things was like, you know, he offered, you know, because he couldn't get rid of this girl, fire this girl, obviously, um, and that he would like get her out on the road more is what he promised and that he would allow me access to the cameras at work to watch. And then I remember my well, friend Judy, literally though, but I mean, I was considering it cause I was literally crazy. I was full of grief. I couldn't imagine having been in this relationship for eight years and then just throwing it away. What's that going to do to my son? How is it going to affect my baby? Um, and but yeah, my friend, I think my friend Judy was like, you want to be looking at a camera all day? And I'm like, and I know I would have. I'd have been like glued to the oh, you would computer, have. like just you stalking, have. you know, and it's just like, that's not the life that I want to live. Yeah. And <clears throat> but at the end of the day, once I came to the decision that I knew I was done, that I needed to kind of get in survival mode <laughs> at that point and just start getting in the shower every day, you know, yeah, get because out of this grief. Yeah, there was a point in time to yeah. where it was like, debilitating. you remember, I would was like, no, you're going to eat. I yeah, was I like, couldn't eat. Yeah, I was like, eat everything. Like, here, start eating. I don't yeah. care if it's a chocolate bar, if it's whatever. Yeah. Because it was so hard. And another le- layer to it that I feel like a lot of women feel and go through, you just, you didn't work because you yeah. had a child with special needs that needed undivided attention right. and care and that you put your whole life into like right between therapy and I mean you did hours and hours and hours of therapy mm-hmm. like that was your life so you didn't work you didn't have your own source of income my whole identity has been a caretaker at this point you know yeah um and just to clarify like I got sober in 2016 March I got pregnant in September so I was 6 months sober yeah. when I got pregnant with Nash and so um once he was born I remember it being like really difficult he cried so much he was co- you know I feel like colicky is such a blanket term for like we don't know what's wrong mm-hmm. with him good luck you know it's like and it you know, my solution for any sort of hardships I go through is to find someone else I can help through the same hardship. I know that that's where I get my healing from. Because it makes you feel like yours isn't wasted. Yeah. Yeah. Like it wasn't. Yes, exactly. And so I remember just assuming and thinking that my experience, that every woman went through that. So I would go and like, Anybody that I saw on Facebook that was like having a baby that I relatively knew, people I really didn't even know, I'd be like, hey, like, I'm here for you. Like, if you need anything, you know, and then like my really close friends started to have babies and I would watch them like they they it wasn't the same experience. And that really confused me. So I I I didn't understand. You know, I had never you know, it was my first child. Um, But as Nash got older I think it was about six months he start he stopped um, babbling, and it was right after his shots, which no, um, I don't think vaccines or anything like that cause autism, but I do believe that uh, there are a lot of vaccines given to kids in a large amount. Yeah, and you know, if I could go back, I would I would do things a lot differently, uh, but that's just not the it yeah. doesn't matter now. So. No. Um, So at six months, he just, he stopped babbling. And by about 
11 months, um, I, no, I'm sorry, 10 months old, I started calling Vanderbilt asking if I could get in with, um, a psychologist. Yeah. And so the, they told me that the earliest they could get him in was 15 months. And I but you just knew as a mother, I knew, you knew he wasn't making eye contact. He was making this sound that was like, mm, mm, you know, um, he would, he wanted to be alone all the time. And all I wanted was a connection and like to love on him and yeah. play with him. And I knew he was struggling. And so, and that's such a powerless feeling, which, you know, me and your mom have talked about, yeah. like when you see your babies sad or you just such a sense of powerlessness. So I was blowing Vanderbilt up, like, <laughs> please help me. And at the time I didn't realize that without a diagnosis, there was no, no services available to me. I uh, thought it was autism. It seems like that's what was going on. He had a lot of gut issues, uh, no eye contact. Um, he didn't respond to his name. And I'm trying to think what else. Um, anyhow, I remember calling Vanderbilt one day and saying I was bawling. Yeah. And I asked them if they could get me a feeding therapist at least until he was 15 months, you know, until our appointment at 15 months old, like, can you please get me a feeding therapist? Because he's, he is like swallowing things whole, but he's choking on water and he's really constipated. Like there was just all these gut issues. I won't go into details about it, but it was traumatic. It was traumatic for me. It was traumatic for Nash. And they said, can you come in at 12 months? You know, when he's 12 months old and I'm yeah. like, absolutely you know, we'll be there. And so, um, like most of, you know, all the appointments I did alone with Nash, I, my mom would come down, you know, when she could, um, and she came down for that one. And it was such a, no, I will, I'll ask looking back, do you think maybe you knew at that time that something in your marriage wasn't clicking because you really were alone alone mm -hmm. yeah i think that that's and which I, it's hard to look at and the only reason i ask is because there's so many people that are in your position right now right that don't know like is this normal should maybe it is my job to do all this by myself because yeah. i am the mom or maybe you know yeah i do want to say and I can't believe I'm even going to say this because of all the confusion, honestly, with the personality of my ex. But, like, he, I think, does mean well. Yeah. I think he's a good human. Um, I just think we are all riddled with selfishness and self-centeredness. Um, and... He did the best he could, maybe. I don't I don't know. But I do remember sitting there with Nash at he was like three months old and he was just screaming. And I had done everything. And God graced me at the time with like almost a robotic personality when because it was just always crying and yeah. I never got angry. I never got really sad. I never I never really wavered from this numb yeah. feeling. Um, and so I was just sitting there with him and he's just screaming and I'm trying to rock him. And I look over at my ex who had just walked in from work and he's like, Hey, how you doing? He's all happy. Go lucky. I'm like, I, I, you know, and I'm like, please, I just, I don't know if I can keep doing this. It's like, this is so much. And he's like, I'm sorry, dear. You know, it was like, like, can I, you just take, yeah. take him? You know, and so that's one of the things that I learned was how to communicate better with my needs <laughs> uh, because there was no, like, getting an idea. You know, he, he couldn't look at me and see that I was struggling so hard and, and, and intuitively know, like, what to offer as far as help. I had to figure that out for myself and ask for it specifically. Yeah. Um, but And I think, too, that's a thing as women, as people in general that are mm -hmm. women, men, whoever, when you're in relationship with someone, 
you have to communicate your wants and needs because the person you're in relationship with, they're not psychic. Right. You know, like they don't. Especially like men in general. I'm so yeah. sorry. But like, I know. Men in general. I'm sorry. They just miss sorry, the mark guys. sometimes. Yeah. That they're, they're not going to be psychic. And so it's hard because you can't hold someone accountable mm-hmm. for something that you haven't communicated yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've learned. It's like, well, they're not doing this, this, and this. And then I look back and I'm like, did I really communicate communicate that? that? Yeah. Maybe I didn't. So it's kind of on me. Right. That I'm not getting that. Right. I mean, you were like the worst for asking for help. Yeah. We will like do no. <laughs> everything in our power to just do it on our own. Yeah. Like we're going to do it on our own, but then we're going to have so much resentment mm-hmm. and anger because we did it all on our own. Right. And that's not necessarily fair to the other person. To the other person. Like even me and Chase, I we I find myself in this situation so much. Like even this morning, he was like, Is there anything I can help you with? And I'm like, No, I'm good. Yeah. I and got then this. I know I'm gonna have anger Re- and mm-hmm. resentment when I do everything. And I'm like, Well, why didn't you do this, this, and this? So like that's on me. Right. And so I have to be better at like self regulating and taking a step back and putting pride and all these things aside and saying, Hey, yeah, I really do need help with this. Right. Can you do this? Exactly. How old was Nash when he was diagnosed? He was 12 months old, 12 months. old. So 12 months old in five days. Um, you know, by 12 months old, I had gotten really good at communicating what I needed from my ex. Um, he just wasn't able to, yeah. to show up. Right. So mm-hmm. my mom, uh, came down for that appointment, 12 months old. It was a interesting feeling uh, because I knew that with the diagnosis of autism, I was a, a flood of help was going to rush in services, um, therapy, things like that for that my son really needed. Um, occupational therapy, uh, uh, feeding therapy, you know, whatever. Uh, speech. Speech. ABA. Oh my gosh. I am the biggest advocate for behavioral therapy. There's, there's amazing behavioral therapy, you know, BCBAs is what they're called. There are so many amazing ones and there are a couple bad ones. If you have a bad experience, try it again, yeah. try it again. It literally saved my son's life. Well uh, now, because he is so, because you were adamant on getting a diagnosis and that's what I feel like we all need to stand firm in what we believe and listen to our bodies more. Our gut. Like even women, like yeah. listen to your body, feel, mm-hmm. insist that you get the right test, the right, because it could save your life. Mm-hmm. And you getting Nash help at such a young age saved his life. Because now, I mean, y'all, the kid is perfect. Yeah, I don't know. I, like I, literally the only thing about him is, He's really picky with what he eats. Oh my gosh, he's Other extremely that, picky. Yeah, like, but a lot of a lot of kids are. But yeah, he really eats like three things. So, but we're yeah. getting there. Progress, yeah. not perfection, right? But he like to see that that's your biggest issue you is know a what? blessing. Exactly, a blessing. And I think you know it's hard because that did take a toll on your marriage. It did because you were. I was constantly working with him. I never. Yeah. I I. I didn't ever want to leave him with anyone, uh, my son, yeah. because I I didn't want anybody else. I, I mean, a mother's love is like no other. It's unconditional. I didn't want anyone getting frustrated with him. No one really knew him like yeah. I did. And like kind of even the little hums and the grunts he would make, I knew what they meant and I knew what he needed to calm him down. I was always 10 steps ahead of whatever the next outburst or like issue was going to be. I was always ahead of that. And you know, kind of kept everything at a sound level, you know? Um, And so I guess what would, what advice would you give to a woman that was in your shoes two years ago of feeling hopeless, not wanting to walk away, but knowing that maybe that's the only choice that you have? Right. Um, are you are you talking about my, with just, my marriage? Yeah, just with that. Because then um, I want to get on to some fun stuff. Okay. Well, I will say that the suggestion that I got early on um, was 
we give 110 into the relationships that we have. That way we don't owe anyone amends. Like we give, we do everything that we can. So when we walk away, if we walk away, we don't feel bad about it. And by the time that I said, I'm done, I stopped listening to him trying to convince me that we'll do this and that and this and this, and then it'll work out. It's like, no, I choose me, my happiness, my mental health and my emotional health over this situation. I have done everything that I can at this yeah. point and I'm, I'm done now. You know, that's what and I would it, suggest. I feel is, like it got to a point too, to where it was, more transactional than mm -hmm. relational it was yeah and i feel like you that's when you know you need to walk away mm -hmm. i know that from like past relationships is the moment it got more transactional than relational mm -hmm. you feel angry bitter resentful because it's just like okay this I'm not emotionally being fed. This right. is giving me nothing other than anger and hurt and all these things. Right. I agree. And so, I don't know. It's just, I'm really proud of you. Thank you. How far you've come. And I don't know. I just feel like when I'm learning this too, it's like when you're in the right relationship mm -hmm. with someone, your relationship with everyone else will be right. You know, mm -hmm. like... Because when you're in a healthy relationship, it teaches you how to have healthy relationship with other people, whether it's friendship, whatever it may be. And I don't know, I feel like right now, and it's so funny because you and I are in such different phases of life, but at the same time, like... We relate so much. Yeah. And too, now it's time for you to like go back to dating. I know. And you're like... It's terrifying. <laughs> It's, it's, it's terrifying. terrifying and I'm not gonna lie I'm a bit traumatized from my past relationships so and it's uh, hard to not take that into consideration yeah like and, and push into yeah. your new relationships mm -hmm. and that's the hard part is like we all tend to hold the new person accountable for the, your past person's mistakes yeah and that is not fair to do to anyone it's not fair you know and it sucks because it's just natural. Right. Like you're so hurt and traumatized that you're just preparing yourself for the worst so you don't get hurt again. We both relate to like taking time and go like going to on site and yeah. getting like therapy for ourselves. Yeah. Um, because if I'm not well, like I can't very, very well have a good relationship with you or anyone else. Um, because, you know, I think go thinking about dating, if I don't love myself through and through, why would I expect anybody else to? Yeah. You know, um, like something's wrong with me or, you know, I, I, like, I think infidelity is just so painful when your partner cheats on you. It just is traumatizing. So yeah. it is hard to, to think about dating and like going out, but but not everyone is the same. Well, also, too, we say that, but <laughs> there's one thing I really want to talk about right now. You know where could, I'm going Yeah, with maybe it? we could, like, wait. I mean, you can, whatever. Okay, y'all. So we're all out here in the dating world, right? Yeah. Like, me, Holly, Chad. Holly's been going through her divorce for... A year. It's It'll a year. be a year. Yeah, it'll be a year, like, yeah. coming... I, coming up a year and it's not wrong for you to be out here going to a dinner with someone trying to put heal yourself put yourself out there because you do deserve love and you do deserve someone who's gonna well and i think i decided to like really take the step to like put myself out yeah. there when one of my ex's girlfriends reached out to me i wish i had screenshotted that text <laughs> It's it is so funny, and I actually oh yeah. So she's talking about her ex husband's girlfriend. Yeah, like this one was of his like in February. Yeah, this yeah. is like in February. I th I mean, I had just stopped grieving, and then he's already like dating some new girl yeah. outside of his job, but a new girl. And um, and I will say that I absolutely love this girl. I have no issues with her. She, I mean, See, it is. But that's the thing because the same thing happened to me. Okay. So. I don't even know if you know. I this. don't. I'm like so what <laughs> this, which obviously wasn't married, but yeah, I dated this um 
NBA player. Let's what? just call it that. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. I dated this NBA player. Yeah. And I went to the draft with him. Like, and I will say that breakup has always been probably the hardest, which is weird because yeah. I, when we first started talking, I wasn't over my ex. Right. I wasn't. But then something switched mm -hmm. and I was like, holy crap, like, I love this guy. Like, it's so easy. We have so much fun. Like, he's hot as hell. Like, I need to see a picture, honey. Girl, I got you. So, the hold on, I gotta show you this. I cannot believe you don't know this. I, I don't, but you know how my brain is. I'm like, yeah, hmm. your brain. Yeah, you're I right. Like forget. I forget. Hold on. Things. Let's see where because I, I just gotta show you. So, like, so cute. Hold on. Which obviously I was in this relationship. <laughs> I was in this relationship in the public eye. Yeah. And so it was just, like I said, he is one of like, he, that's the hardest breakup, but yeah. I really don't fault him. So when we met, we, he saw me in a restaurant in LA because I was out in LA filming. He saw me in a restaurant. He was signing with his agency mm -hmm. and he messaged me on Instagram and was like, I think I saw you in the restaurant I was at tonight. It was Craig's in Beverly Hills. And he was like, I really didn't want to bother you, but you know, but here yeah, I am but, but bothering you. <laughs> here I am. So he was like, didn't want to bother you. And I didn't see it till like later that night. So then we started messaging. He was out in LA training before he went to the NBA draft. And like we hung out every day. Those from are the, the best. Like it's the best. Like <laughs> hung out every day from that message forward. And we had so much fun. And then we went on, I went with him to the draft. Like I spoiled the heck out of this kid. Like oh when I tell you, Bought, bought, which gifts are not everything. I just like, that's how I that, show yeah. my love for people. Like right. I love buying things for people and just showering you with things. And we also grew up very differently. Right. You know, I grew up very privileged and he grew up just very middle class, but like just wasn't exposed to the things that I was exposed to. Mm -hmm. He was from like a little old town in Ohio and Ohio. Yeah, I know. Okay. And so we just grew up very differently. And then I went with him to the draft. I was like the only girlfriend at the draft. Mm -hmm. And I know. So also to NBA players, we'll, we'll MLB, yeah. NFL, y'all just stay away from athletes. <laughs> but we just like, I literally got a billboard for him in Times Square. Oh my gosh. And I thought buying cookies <laughs> for a guy was... <laughs> I was like humiliated. Anyways, go on. A no, billboard. I literally got clean. a billboard for him in Times Square. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Because the draft was like right on his birthday. Right. And I was just like so proud of this because right. like I loved this person so much. I was Aww. so proud to be a part of like this whole journey. And then we went, so that was June, I think, June, July. And then we went to the Cayman Islands for my birthday. And my birthday's in August. One week, my family was there. Second week, like all my friends were coming. Family was leaving. And it was like one of the last days mom and dad were there. And he had taken a video of Chloe and like had posted it on his Snapchat story. She was like singing and Aww, dancing. I love Chloe. And... Dad was like, oh, my God, I want that video. And I was like, oh, I, I got it. Yeah. I was like, I'll just send it to you. And I'm never the type to go through someone's phone. If I have to go through your phone, I shouldn't be with you to begin Amen. with. It's Amen. just it, Once you get to that point, it's like, only going to go downhill. Exactly. Because it drives you crazy. So I had his password just from, like, using his phone. Right. But nothing. I've never gone through it. And so I went to a Snapchat to save the video, send it to myself. I pulled up Snapchat and there was a blue arrow and it was a girl's name and the message hadn't been opened yet. So I was like, Hmm, hmm. interesting. So I swiped and she had saved the whole conversation. Uh oh. And it was, I love you. I miss you. If I wasn't with someone, would you be with me? 
on and on and on. And I just remember being devastated because I had finally let myself like be fall in love with this person I and know. be vulnerable. And I found this and mm-hmm. I will say it's the only time in my life I've ever seen Todd Chrisley speechless because this guy was dating. He was asleep on the pool chair. When I saw these messages, <laughs> I took a picture of them from my phone, sat his phone back down, went upstairs, packed up all his stuff. And my dad wakes him up and goes, Hey buddy, like, <laughs> Shit's about to go down and you're right at the center of it. Sassy's on the loose. Literally. And next thing I know, they both come walking into the condo and I look at him. I was like, hey, do you need the number for Delta Southwest American so you you can get the hell out of here? Uh, Go you. And dad literally, his mouth like dropped (laughs) and was like, (gasps) I'm uh, like picturing this. Yeah. Like he was speechless and he did all the, the person I dated did all the crying begging Mm -hmm. what you know i was like okay like as long as you say nothing happened whatever yeah and then this girl and i became friends right to this day we are still friends we go back and forth on social media because it wasn't her like it's the person in the relationship it is their fault right like my man's wandering all up over on you that's that's on him like that that's not on you Yeah. And so I, at first I had anger towards her, but then I was like, wait, this isn't on this girl. We're both actually kind of hurt right now. So it's not on her, it's on him. But also too, I want to preface it by like, this is also a guy who, he should have never been in a relationship with me. Like I had grown up so fast and he didn't. And he was now signing a contract with the NBA, literally $12, $15 million mm-hmm. at a signature came from not much and now has all of this money. And money will change people, honey. Yes, it will. And two, I just think it was, I honestly feel for him, I do. And it's because there was so much being thrown at him at one time. Mm-hmm. He had fame, fortune, all these things. Like I slowly grew into it. Right. Not just doing thrown it. Yeah. into it. He was just thrown into a lion's den and good luck. Yeah. And so I wish he would have had enough respect to say, hey, I can't, I can't be in a relationship yeah. right now. I can't. But, you know, it's like I said, that's been the hardest one for me to let go of and even after he signed to the nba the hardest part of the whole thing was you have these men out here that want to keep like dangling something in front of you because they know that you love them so it's Mm -hmm. like hey i don't want to be with you but but like why mm -hmm. don't you come fly to yeah do the dallas to see me when we play the mavs or to where Houston, when we play the Rockets, whatever. And I'm like, no, I told him, I was like, if you want to see me, you can come to me mm-hmm. and like, we can figure this out. And literally it just breaks my heart that people look at marriage as like, mm-hmm. they don't look at it as serious as they should, mm-hmm. because I'm telling you this guy, he's going to go through a divorce, right? He's it, going to, like because Holy union, you know, he like- was messaging me trying to get me to meet him when they played against the Mavs oh. days before he got engaged, literally. Oh. And then after getting engaged was still attempting to message me. Yeah. And like, I was like, I told him, I was like, Hey, make sure that you're doing the right thing. Make sure this is it. Right. And I'm glad you brought this up. Cause I think this was like one of the main things I wanted to to hit on was like protecting yourself as a woman and as a stay at home mom, which I didn't really talk about, but it's like, you know, you mentioned that, um, my husband or ex, whatever was well off. We've always lived way above our means. It's always been like having all these nice things and we could pay for it, but we'd be in debt for a little while, then pay it off. You know what I mean? Like we were never like just out here thriving, just money, you know, money to blow all the time. Um, but one of the things that I see happen and I realize that I'm not unique is that, um, 
in a lot of relationships where there's a stay at home mom or just like a little show pony wife is that when the man does get his doctorate or come into some money, finally, they are done. And guess who's left there with the child with no credit, no job, no way to fend for themselves. Like nothing is in my name. The only thing that's in my name is the house, but my, but my name isn't on the mortgage on the loan. And so I don't know if I'm going to be able to refinance. Why? Because he's, you know, told me I couldn't get credit cards, um, that my credit wasn't right. And I didn't, I just trusted those things. And you can't let, I think too, one thing you're getting at is like, you can't let the love that you have for someone cause you to be stupid. Yeah. Or just so (laughs) dependent Yeah, that you have like, just it's, it's sad that I'm at this place now and it's not like this in all relationships. I'm not saying you can't trust your partner, but don't be an idiot. Yeah. You know, and I was, I was, I was completely dependent and had nothing to fall back on. And now I'm in a position where financially, like I am a hustler. You're out there working. I'm working my butt off. Yeah. And I hang out with people that do the same. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's all I wanted to say on that. It's just like, if you're a stay-at-home mom, it's not all it's cracked out to be. It is a difficult job. Um, and I don't think there's a, a ton of respect for it as it should be so valued and respected. So just take care of yourself. Do your research. Exactly. And get don't, your credit up. Make sure you're on the loan. <laughs> make sure your name's on that title, honey. One thing I've learned is I'm not going to allow my love to cause me to be dumb. Yeah. And I think that we've both taken that away from the past few years. Mm-hmm. And I'm just so blessed and grateful to know you and to have you, you on my podcast and to tell your story Thank because you. it's going to touch so many people. And I hope. Addiction is a real thing. Mm-hmm. Like you said, it's real. You struggle. And for you to have, like, that's the biggest accomplishment it like, is. for it's, you. Yeah. Besides Nash's recovery. Yeah. Of, an, of, you know, his own recovery. Like, yeah, yeah, mine is, is, is a great accomplishment and nobody should be ashamed of that. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Everybody's yeah. got their stuff. If you, as, mm-hmm. as people say, you know, exactly. Uh, and pain is a touchstone of all spiritual growth. So everybody's got something. Well, I love you. I love and you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks.